bonny boat like a bird on the wing over the sea to Arryn. The guy who wrote that came so close to writing a very famous Scots folk song. However, I'm on my way to the beautiful Isle of Arryn. And here's the skipper who's taking us across. Captain. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed for inviting us up here. Now then, how big's the ferry? Uh, 85 metres long. And how many passengers? 800 uh, maximum. And how many trips a day? Five round trips a day. So 4,000 people going over and coming back. Beautiful place. Is it easy to get into? Yes, uh, it's quite easy to get into. Right then, so even I could get us in? Yes, I think. What happens if I just turn this? Can I turn this? Yes, uh -huh. oh! <laughs> On this morning's King of the Road, childhood memories of living in a castle. And we're stuck in a jam. Not the traffic variety, though, but Aaron's own produce. Ugh. I'll never do that again. As for Anna Walker, I told her to take a run and jump. Full of cliches as usual, Ross, but today I've got one of my own because this is a sport which is really taking off. I'm going to have a go at paragliding, and what better place to try it than up here on the windmill? And now, all you wanted to know about Aaron, but were afraid to ask. It's a fact. Sailing into Brodick, the largest village in the Isle of Arran from the mainland port of Adrossen, the bay is dominated by Brodick Castle. It's a reminder that the Isle of Arran was once the personal property of the Stuart Kings of Scotland. The Isle of Arran has been described as Scotland in miniature, coastal villages sheltered by protective bays and dwarfed by granite peaks and deep secluded glens. Brodick Castle is set in the island's country park. The castle dates from the 13th century, but it's been enlarged and improved ever since and was a family home to the Hamilton family until 1957, when it passed into the custody of the National Trust for Scotland. The northern village of Loch Ranza is Arran's second point of entry, served by a short ferry crossing from Kintyre. Like Brodick, the village lies under the protection of a castle, the ruined 15th century Loch Ranza Castle. In the village of Catacol are the 12 almost identical cottages which were built to house those forcibly removed from Arran's northern glens during the deer clearances of the late 19th century. With its wild and varied scenery and long history, the Isle of Arran could well be described as Scotland in miniature. Now, the National Trust for Scotland owned the magnificent Brodick Castle. But, of course, it was your home many years ago. Yes, it was. It, uh, right until my mother died in 1957, and we lost it in from death duties, unfortunately. It was a lovely home. Now, it's hard to imagine a castle being a home, especially as a kid. What was it like? It was extremely homely, you know, with all one's friends. I mean, one didn't know any other way of <laughs> Just tell me about inside your memories of, of inside the castle. Um, I can tell you what, what, can, what, what can one say about that. I mean, you, you live there. Yeah. Um, well, the only thing I can say is that when you go inside there, you'll find the um, front stairs are panelled with deer heads. And um, I used to go down as a little girl, all dressed up in my best, you know, little red um, shoes and white socks and so forth uh, to, to uh, my parents. And then the awful moment came when I had to get back up to the nursery and the electric light catches the glass eyes of the deer and they're all staring at you. But you had playmates like Prince Radio from Monaco. He's second cousin, you see, because my grandfather's uh, sister, Mary, married Monaco first of all and then a Hungarian secondly. And, um, yes, uh, his sister, Princess Antoinette, is just a fortnight younger than me. And they used to come over for a lot in the summer, for, you know, some weeks, three, four weeks uh, at a time. Um, oh, many years running. I got my pocket money by feeding 26 dogs. That was puppies, two litters of puppies. And my mother was one of the first people to bring schnauzers in, um, middle-sized schnauzers, you know. And um, 26 dogs. And um, when I said I thought my uh, wages, which was two shillings a, a week, should go up for this monumental work, 
She said, now that's funny because the cost of living's gone up. I thought I might charge you <laughs> a little extra for your food. <laughs> that was the end of that. Were you too young to appreciate the, the full beauty of the paintings and, and oh, the songs? Oh, yes. If you, I mean, can you tell me what's on your mantelpiece? Not at all. No, of course, Not but, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you, you live there, that's it, you see. <laughs> Well, the conditions really couldn't be any better today. Beautiful blue sky and sun, and we've just hiked up here to the perfect site for a bit of paragliding, and my instructor is going to be Zabdi. Now, you're the Scottish women's champion, so when did you start paragliding? Right. I started five years ago when the sport came, first came to Britain. I was actually spending the night on top of Goat Fell with some friends, and he flew off in the morning, and I had to walk down, and I decided I had to learn how to do this. Is it very difficult? Um, it's a lot easier to learn than hang gliding, um, just more simple controls. You actually get flying on your first day, as you'll see soon. <laughs> now, what about the championship? You're going to be defending your title this year, aren't you? Yes, um, we're holding the Scottish Open Paragliding Championships here in Arran on May the 15th, 16th. We'll actually be using the competition to launch the North Arran Trust Fund, um, which will be used to repair paths on the island. So this shows paragliding to be a conscientious sport. And so it should be good. Right. Is it difficult to learn? Do you reckon I can learn it? Um, you should be able to learn it. We get most folk flying in the first day, um, and there it's just a question of extending your skills. You're flying in this way, pulled down on the toggles, you need to turn so you're carrying on in the direction that you've been going, and roll. Flying down, just landed. Oh! Now I'll show you what the paraglider is and what all the bits are called. <laughs> is it very expensive to get equipment like this? Um, it costs about 1000 for a beginner model and 2000 for an intermediate um, to competition. Oh, Zoom has this one's for me. It must be a beginner. Yeah. Now we're going to reverse launch. You lift this lot over your head, cross around. Take hold of the toggles. And the brake lines and the front risers. What you're going to do first is called building the wall. You pull up on the front risers and just step back a touch. But the parachute can't go anywhere because you've got hold of these back lines which are attached to the back of the canopy. So you can pull it up and check all your lines. Rather than fighting with the canopy because it can have quite a pull, you can just step towards it like that which eases it down, the wind comes out of it. I'll launch the canopy above my head and just have it sitting there. It's got to that time of day again. Yes, silly helmet and harness time. Right then, Zabdi, this always goes on first, doesn't it? Yep. And now, the now harness. You just step backwards and pull on those. Okay, now walk towards it. Okay, now let go of those. That's it, sort of built. You know it was okay. Straight up. Right, let go of them. Right, grab the risers again and pull them up. Just the front <laughs> pink ones. Right, let's do it. Right, let go of the risers. That's good. Okay, you're going to let go and turn. Let's go that. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I turned the wrong way, didn't I? Right, no. Just let go of the brakes. Right, just run forward. Pull on right hand. Let's see. Right, ease up. Just run forward now and pull gently on both hands. Right hand. Woo! <laughs> well, I took off. <laughs> Not for long. 
Well, Zabdi, I just about managed to take off and land, but this is a very gentle slope, isn't it? Yep. Am I ready to go on the big one? Yes, you did that very well. So we'll head on over to the other hill where everyone else is flying. A slightly bigger flight. All the experts, huh? Yep. Here we go. As I relax here at the Okrani Country Club, I've got a question for you. What is the main industry on Aran? What do you think it is? Farming? Wrong. It is marmalade and mustard. Aran Provisions, the company, Ranald's the man behind it. Now then, tell us a bit about your, your wares. <laughs> Well, I mean, the, the, the company here in Arn, Arn Provisions uh, supplies food for the gift trade, and we've concentrated very much on marmalades and mustards. Uh, marmalades of a different type, not your standard run-the-mill marmalades, but marmalades with carrot and marmalades with malt whiskey. Uh, bring out the flavours of the oranges. Uh, wonderful product, wonderful product for breakfast. Yes, just right for this time of day. I mentioned it is the, the largest industry on the island. I mean, how big are we talking here? Well, we, we, we employ at the height of the season about 50 people on the island. Um, and given out of a population on the island of just over 4,000, which during the tourist season, which of course is major, uh, it rises to over 20,000. In fact, they, they say actually that the island drops about a foot in the summer. <laughs> And sometimes when you play around the golf course, you realise that's true. <laughs> right then, I've got to taste the products, and that's the way to test it all. Uh, what would you suggest for well, us? I would, I would start on the carrot, the carrot oh, right. This is a new one we've just mm -hmm. brought out this season, and uh, really is, is creating a lot of excitement, actually, in the, yep. in the Makes in you the see trade. in the dark. Absolutely. The old carrots. It does work, All the know. vitamins. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You ready for something there? A little mm -hmm. bit, a little bit more. Uh, this one here is. Uh, that was very nice. Marmalade with uh, Glengoyne malt whiskey. Ooh. Now, yeah, we use that because it's an unpeated one and is therefore not too smoky when it comes through the, the orange. Right, Anna. You just talk me through it as I'm munching away because I hate people on television well, you, talking at the same time. You, you will get the people who say they'd rather have their marmalade straight and drink the whiskey, but uh, <laughs> they blend really together very well. Mm. Oh, it's me again, isn't it? Yes. It's quiz time as we attempt to find Britain's brightest place. Ten questions to ask the people of Arran. Some on the place itself, others general knowledge questions. Each question can be asked up to three times until I get the correct answer. If a wrong answer is still given after the third attempt, I've had it on that one. It's the place that gets the most correct with the least attempts that will win £500 for a local <coughs> community project. So I better get on my way. Where's my jacket? I'll go for the ferry. Ronald, here's a quick question for you. What is the name of the stretch of water between Arran and Kintyre? Oh, a super piece of sailing water called Brannan Sound. Well done. First question correct. Off we go to the ferry. <laughs> Hello? Reading oh. the paper. Sorry to disturb you. Name one of the two Scottish regions that, that border England. One of the two Scottish regions that border England. Uh, no? Uh, no? Uh, no. Right. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Thanks, anyway. Thanks for trying. Hello there. Hello. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's a Martian. Hello. <laughs> Name one of the two Scottish regions that border England. Uh, Northumberland? No, Scottish regions. Oh, oh it's a beautiful girl here. Hello. Hi. Hiya. Hiya. Now then. Name one of the two Scottish regions that border England. One of the two Scottish regions. No. Ooh, third and final attempt here. The borders. Borders, well done. Or oh, Dumfries and Galloway. Rescued it. Bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye. Whoops. Hello. Hi. Oh, I like the quiz today. I'm getting... Oh, sorry about that. I've just managed <laughs> to kick the microphone as well. Now then, which fictional character features in the novels from Russia with Love and Doctor No? No? No. You don't know? No. Thought you would have got that one. Hello. <laughs> Ask you the same question, sir. Which fictional character features in the novels from Russia with Love and Doctor No? James Bond. Exactly. It looks a bit like Q, doesn't it, actually? <laughs> Good. Uh, thank you. Could have made me Q. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now then, your question. Yes. What was the name of the family that owned Brodick Castle before 1957? The family name. Ford. 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 No, it's not. Oh. Thanks for trying. <laughs> On we go. Should I ask the dog? No. Hello. Sorry about the legs. You can get ointment for that now, oh, right, What thanks. was the name of the family that owned Brodick Castle before 1957? The name of the family? Pass. Pass. Wrong answer. <laughs> thanks. Spotted anything yet? 
And the Hoyt. What was the name of the family that owned Brodick Castle before 1957? Third and final attempt here. The Hall of Aaron. I haven't got what, a clue. Not got a clue. It was the Hamilton family. Oh, oh dear. Here's your question, madam. Right. What is the name of the last Labour Prime Minister in Great Britain? Last Labour Prime Minister... Harold Wilson? No, it wasn't. <laughs> what a beautiful day. I didn't believe it. What is the name of the last Labour Prime Minister in Great Britain? Who was the last Labour Prime Minister in Great Britain? Uh, Callaghan. Yes, Lord Callaghan. Well done, sir. Uh, no, I mean, uh, Lord Harry, no. Ooh, ooh. All right. What is the family name of the British royal family? Windsor. Windsor is correct. Let me move in here, madam. Your question. What is the name of the highest peak on the Isle of Arran? Goatfell. Goatfell, correct. They're going well. Your local MP's name is Brian Watson, but what is the constituency called? Cutting up, sir. No. Hit the Cutting. post, thanks. Uh. Right, on we go. Off the ferry, and now, hello. Hello. Your local MP's name is Brian Wilson. Yeah. Is a great answer. But what is the constituency called? <laughs> Labour is the wrong answer. Hello. You're in. <laughs> Sir, your local MP's name is Brian Wilson, but what is the constituency called? Cunningham. Cunningham District. Mm, it's your third attempt. No. no. Cunningham North was the answer. Ah, there goes one. Right, here's your question. Come. Yeah, like, running away here like she... Oh, no, she's got a grip now. Right, what are the 12 apostles that can be found in Catacol? Um, houses. Yes, they are cottages built for the people cleared out of the glens in the 19th century. Right, off we go. You can let go of me now. Thank you. A man carving out a new career for himself. Alexander Graham Bell is generally credited with which invention? Uh, telephone. Telephone is correct. Well done. Off you go again. Thank you. <laughs> he was very lucky because he had my jokes the first time, Ryan. Well done. The people of Aaron, eight correct, but 18 attempts. Not very good and certainly not... Well, I really enjoyed just lifting a few feet off the ground, so I've now climbed right up to the top of the windmill to get a bit of a higher flight. Now then, Zabdi, is there anything I need to know before I do this flight? Right. Yes, I showed you on the way up where your landing area is going to be. Um, what you have to do this time is, once you've got it above your head, turn and just run forward the way you did before, but the ground's going to fall away a lot quicker and you might get some height. So you'll need to do some turns to lose height. What you do is just go along parallel with the hill with your hands up once you've flown out from the hill and then you'll turn right. So you just pull the hand down and turn round and then just carry on parallel again with the hill and then turn back round. Always turn away from the hill, never towards it and then just land down near the windsock down there. So I'm effectively sort of zigzagging along across yes. the hill. And yep. then when, when I land, what's the most important thing to remember right. for landing? As you come into land, facing into the wind, you have your hands up in the air. When you're about your own height from the ground, you just pull both down smoothly, stall the wing, and you'll land very gently into wind. OK, Zabdi, I've got my courage up. Let's do it. Let go of the rider. If you keep going forward, just grab the, just the toggles, nothing just else in your hands. Just keep running. As long as you run, it will be fine. Woo! Right. Here I go. OK. Just steer it. Remember what I said. Excellent. Oh, this is fantastic. I never thought I'd go this high today. Ah. Oh, I'm turning round. Woo! Oh, I want to keep going forever. Oh, wow, I can see for miles. This is the most brilliant feeling in the world. Wow. was really exhilarating but I'm still very much a beginner so let's see what the experts can do
None of that. It's time now for quiz call and your chance to win one hundred pounds. And if you want to win the wad, here's the hurdle. In which county is Banbury? Is it A, Oxfordshire, B, Warwickshire, or C, Worcestershire? In which county is Banbury? Is it A, Oxfordshire, B, Warwickshire, or C, Worcestershire? If you know the answer, here is the number to dial. 0891 800 333. 0891 800 333. If you're right and your name comes out of the computer, you'll cop that £100. Oh, yes, in the line, stay up until midnight. We'll tell you the winner tomorrow, right about 10 to 1. Two, three, four. Dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Well, that's it. The end of another King of the Road. Not that I'm biased or anything, but I do love Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Mind you, it has been beautiful weather. Had a wonderful time. I love it. I love it. We can't stop here forever, though. The ferry's waiting. And so are the girls of Aaron High School. Hurrah! 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 And they're waiting here for a very special reason. They're going to sing us off the island. Take it away, ladies. I'm going to sing Alan Aaron.